how to get more energy and feel fuller for longer. This is the title of this week's masterclass. Now, if you're if you're watching me live right now, comment comment live down below. If you're watching me on the replay, at some point, sorry that that that, that kind of distracted me. Then at some point in the future, like most of you will be, comment comment replay down below. I'm going to put my phone on silent because otherwise that's gonna that's gonna really distract us and that's gonna be. You know, it's not it's not a, not a pleasant sound, is it? Hearing that go off. So let me put that on silent. Um, you might be able to tell my, by my voice. You might not. I'm not. I'm not feeling particularly well. Okay, I'm fighting off a little bit of a cold or flu. Um, and I've been been kind of. It's been a week, and I'm still feeling under the weather. Uh, but I think I'm. I think I'm coming out the other side of it, which is which is which is good news. All right. So be be gentle with me today all right i'm just gonna check quickly that we are live before we go any further if you can see me if you can hear me comment hello down below all right let's take a little look and we are fantastic good morning christine hope hope you're well before we go any further i'm gonna have a quick sip of sip of this h2o so i'm not coughing in your ear holes too much and then we'll uh, we'll get started. If if any of you ladies have got any questions about anything that we're about to cover, if you've got any concerns, anything like that, please do comment down below. Because the only reason I'm doing this, I'm sat here right now talking to you ladies, is to help. All right. Now, if it's not helpful because you're not understanding or you need some clarity or a better, you know, explanation of whatever we're talking about, please do comment down below. And that's not just you ladies that are watching me live. This is for you ladies that are watching me in the replay in the future too, because 99% of you will be watching in the future. Okay, now, so some of you ladies who are newer to the group, this is our weekly masterclass. This is something that we do each and every week, or we try to do it on a, on a weekly basis. And we cover, you know, hard hitting topics, you know, things that you ladies are going to find helpful on this journey to, you know, lose. 20 to 100 pounds plus lower your A1C, achieve remission and get off all meds for life. That's the the outcome that I am looking to guide you to. Okay, so without any further ado, let's get started. So the reason why we've got both of these topics together is quite simple, really, because there's a crossover between most of the things that we are going to be discussing. Okay, and that's going to make sense as we get started all right now i was a little bit hesitant of um covering this as a masterclass because i was a little bit concerned that some of the ladies who voted for it or some of the ladies you know some of you ladies right now might be looking for what doesn't exist what i mean by that is you know some one thing that i can change that's gonna you know cure my energy problems and help me feel fuller for longer you know one magic tablet one magic pill but that doesn't exist quite frankly okay you know all the things that we're talking through today you know takes a little bit of time takes a little bit of effort okay so again that's enough of this let's let's get started all right so how to get more energy and feel fuller for longer we've already gone through this if you are watching me live comment live if you're watching me on the replay you know what to do comment replay down below so one of the first ways at which we're looking to increase energy and feel fuller for longer is by increasing high volume, low calorie foods. OK, so what do I mean by this? So high volume, low calorie foods are foods that we can eat a lot of at the cost of not many calories. OK, so you're talking like salad. You know, you're talking, you know, uh, bell peppers, mushrooms, um, you know, any vegetable, really, you know, broccoli, anything like that, which you can eat a lot of at the cost of not many calories. Now, you might be thinking, how does this aid me in energy? So all of these foods typically are have got a high nutrient density. OK, a high level of nutrient density, which helps us perform better, helps us feel better helps us have more energy okay if you 
you know, cut out all vegetables and only eat a single vegetable for the next two weeks, probably not going to feel great. Okay. Versus if you was to eat, you know, vegetables as, you know, a decent serving a few times a week, at least daily would be, would be great. If you could eat a serving of vegetables every single day, that is awesome. It's not maybe practical for everyone. So, you know, at least three, four, five times a week, if you can make an effort to consume high volume, low calorie foods, salads, vegetables that have a high level of, uh, of nutrient density, you're going to feel better. Okay. That's a fact. You're going to feel better. Okay. But not only that, you're going to feel fuller for longer. Okay. You're going to feel fuller for longer. So if if you had um, if you had a twin, yeah, if you had a twin, both of you consumed one thousand five hundred calories. Okay, your twin ate, you know, you, you know, a little bit, you know, low low nutrient density food, you know, take out, going out for food, but you ate high volume low calorie foods, but the same amount of calories. If you put that day's worth of food on a table you would probably have two to three times more food. Same calories, but two to three times more food. Which of those, you or your twin, is going to feel fuller for longer? Of course you are, because you're eating two to three times the volume of food. So not only does this help us feel better through energy, but helps us feel fuller for longer because we're eating more food because eating less calories doesn't mean eating less food. And if we're trying to lose weight, trying to reduce body fat, then of course, it's very important that it's sustainable, that you are eating food, that you are eating sufficient food, that you aren't struggling with, you know, appetite, a high appetite all day, every day. Because if you are, guess what? You're going to snack more. You're going to eat bigger portions. You're not going to adhere to dietary goals. And you're not going to see the, the results at which you want at the end of the month. Yeah. Does that make sense, ladies? If it does, comment high volume down below. And then we'll move on. Once we've got a few, we'll move on. Um, if I don't see your comment, I'm going to assume that you're confused and, you know, a little bit, a little bit lost. Okay. So please do comment high volume down below if that makes if that mean if that makes complete and utter sense high volume nice suzette michelle nice awesome good morning tony good morning kathy good morning lisa great ladies makes sense awesome next we've got calories so what do i what do i really mean by this so if you're under consuming calories, you're going to see a big dip in energy. Okay. If you're under consuming calories, you're going to see a big increase in your appetite, which is why consuming too fewer calories isn't sustainable long term because your energy is going to suck. It's going to suck. Your appetite is going to spike through the roof going to be starving you're going to be struggling with cravings okay it's going to be miserable you're going to over consume if it's going to take you six nine twelve months plus for you to reach your goal are you going to be able to do it with zero energy and feeling starving all day of course you're not if you could you would have already done it okay which is why cutting calories too low is really just shooting yourself in the foot you're not going to be successful okay so under consuming calories. Obviously, if you are under consuming calories, then you're going to be losing body fat at quite a quick rate, of course, which is why it's losing body fat too quick isn't sustainable because what is required is to under consume calories because calories are what dictate fat loss, nothing else. So, fat, which is why fast uh, fat loss. Fast fat loss is often incredibly unsustainable because it requires you to underconsume calories. No energy, appetites through the roof, miserable. It's not, there's no flexibility. There's no room for your normal favorite foods, which means you're not going to stick to it. 
just just hit the funny bone on my elbow, <laughs> which means you're not going to stick to it. All right. Does that make sense, ladies? Why, as to why, under-consuming calories can lead to having a dip in energy and an increase in that appetite. So we want calories to be within a decent range so that we can experience more energy and a higher level of satiety, feeling fuller for longer. Yeah, if that makes sense, ladies, comment calories down below. These are the things that I'm looking for when the ladies come to us who we coach inside of our one-to-one -one coaching programs. If they're experiencing low energy or, you know, spikes in, in hunger, these are the things that we look at, okay? So if that makes sense, calories, patty, fantastic. Awesome. Suzette. Karen. All right. Great job, ladies. Next, we've got increase your quality of sleep. So, you know, this is pretty obvious in regards to, to energy. You know, if you sleep eight hours every night for a week and then sleep six hours every night for a week, the following week, <laughs> that, that's going to be a significant dip in, in, in energy. You're not going to feel good. You're going to feel awful, okay, if you compare those two. Now, if you're if you only ever sleep for six hours, then you're probably not really going to notice that as much because you become accustomed to what that feels like. OK, this has been studied in so many studies that us as humans are awful at being able to identify our current level of sleep deprivation. This has literally been studied. People, you know, in studies, you know, participants having their sleep restricted and then, and then <coughs> sorry, <coughs> and then themselves with the people running the study, evaluating their level of sleep deprivation. And that's because, well, let me rephrase that. No one is immune to the effects of being underslept. No one can operate on less sleep. The truth is, you're just used to feeling that cruddy. That's what it comes down to. It's not that you don't feel cruddy. It's just that you're used to that level of cruddiness. <laughs> Word of the day, cruddy. Okay. Does that make sense, ladies? And this has been studied over and over again. No one can operate any, there's no one who is immune to operating better on less sleep. It's just those people are used to feeling pretty damn awful because they've been having they've been experiencing that poorer level of sleep for so long okay so that's the energy aspect how does this impact your appetite so there's a direct correlation between your level of uh with, with your sleep and your level of hunger okay there is a direct correlation between lack of sleep and increase in appetite okay so lack of sleep leads to an increase in appetite. And that is because this lack of sleep leads to an increase in our hunger hormone called ghrelin. Okay, we've got two hunger hormones. Ghrelin is responsible for increasing our appetite and leptin is responsible for decreasing our appetite. Okay, and the connection is sleep leads to an increase in that hunger hormone called ghrelin, which leads to an increase in appetite. Okay, that's been proven time and time again. Lack of sleep leads to more hunger, more cravings, bigger portion sizes, the overconsumption of food, and not the result that you want at the end of the month. You haven't lost weight, your blood sugars are still high. Okay, now increasing your quality of sleep is different for everyone because if I got 10 people in a room and that who all struggle with sleep you'd be able to break that down into, you know, four or five groups of people within the 10 that struggle with things that are specific to them, okay? Specific to them. You know, the first most important thing is making sure you have a nightly routine, okay? A nightly routine, going to bed at And this is one of the most difficult parts, okay? Because as women, as mothers, you ladies watching right now, grandparents, whatever. 
8 p.m. onwards, 9 p.m. onwards is when you get to just be on your own and just watch what you want to watch on the TV. For instance, you get to do what you want to do. You get to eat what you want to eat because no one else is around. And this is your your me time, okay, which is why it can be difficult. This is why it can be difficult. So going to bed at the correct time is obviously one of the first thing we need to do. And if you're currently getting, you know, if you're currently going to bed at midnight, don't make a goal of going to bed at 10 p.m. You're not going to stick to that. You're just not. Okay. 11 p.m. or 11.30 p.m. would be much better. Okay. So a nightly routine. What are you doing on the lead up to bed? That is also important. Yeah. What are you doing on the lead up to bed? You know, are you doing a little stretching session? You're going to do a little 10 minute yoga session. Doesn't really matter. You know, 10 minutes of meditation where you're just sitting and breathing. Okay. If you can build the association between doing something and sleeping, that's fantastic. Okay. Things like screens. Okay. I'm talking to you right now. I'm looking at a screen. Got a screen right here. Got, you know, iPads, tablets, you know, all these different, or, you know, even your TV got a screen all of these screens emit a type of light called blue light okay and this blue light reduces the levels of melatonin within out that a chemical which increases sleep pressure okay so past 5 p.m your your brain is, is 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 releasing a chemical called melatonin which is increasing sleep pressure okay 5 p.m onwards you're on your phone, you're on the telly, you're on your laptop, and these the, the blue light is actually reducing the levels of that melatonin, leading to a worse quality of sleep. Okay, so bedtime, bedtime routine, um, you know, electronics, you've got things like overhydrating too late at night, you're getting to go up to the loo three times. That's far too much. Stop drinking liquid past 7 p.m. Now you only get it once. Now you're getting an extra hour sleep because you're not interrupted. Just one example of many. And I could go on and on and on and talk to you about how to increase your quality of sleep. But it is specific among, among all of you. You've only got your own. You've all got your own reasons as to why you want, are not sleeping particularly well. Could be managing your stress and emotion. If you're not sleeping well because you're stressed, experiencing stress or emotion, then all of the time that you are struggling to manage that stress and emotion, you are not going to sleep well. So there's your solution, okay? A coach will obviously be able to help you with that or learning yourself how to manage, how to manage that stress and emotion, okay? Again, I could talk about how to increase the quality of sleep all day. You know, I could do a whole hour-long masterclass on this. Um, does that make sense, ladies? If it does, Everything we've just discussed in regards to sleep and energy, as well as appetite, comment, sleep down below. Once we've got a few of those, we'll move on to the to the next one. All right. Sleep. Nice sleep. Cool. Debbie. Awesome. All right. I'll have another sip of water. My throat's getting a little bit. A little bit dry. Okay. Fantastic. Moving on then. Are you sufficiently hydrated? Okay. Now, if you drink 20 ounces of water every single day for the next week, then the following week, drink 100 ounces of water, there is going to be a distinct difference in how you chat and how you feel in regards to energy, a distinct difference, okay? Being dehydrated has a huge impact on physical energy as well as you know, mental clarity, okay? 90% of the population is chronically dehydrated, okay? Chronically dehydrated. So it's very important that you know, if you even if right now you start with 40 ounces of water a day, that's better than zero ounces of water a day. OK, over time, increase that. But if you aren't, if you are not sufficiently hydrated, this is going to be a big reason as to why you're not feeling too good in terms of energy. OK, as well as energy, you're probably going to experience, um, you know, short spikes in hunger, too. You know, and that with that, 
hunger are going to come cravings. With that hunger are going to come bigger portion sizes. With those things, they're going to come at the end of the month, less results because you've overconsumed, because you're not hydrating. Yeah, because you're not hydrating. This is important, really important. Sufficiently hydrated. How many of you here are drinking, you know, more than 60 or 70 ounces a day? You know, how many of you? If you are, that's great. Comment yes. If you're not, comment no. And this is this is good for, for accountability. If you're not, then, you know, don't go from drinking 10 ounces to 60 because that's probably going to be quite difficult. You're not actually going to stick to it. You might do it for a few days or a week, but build the habit over time. Okay, wake up with 20 ounces of water. Every time you um, eat a meal, drink 20 ounces of water. There we go. You've already got 40 to 60 ounces right there. Fantastic. Fantastic. And if you're if you're keeping your stomach full through oh sorry <coughs> through drinking lots of water, you're gonna send fullness signals to your brain and like I said, you're not going to be struggling with these cravings as much, with the appetite as much. You know, if you're intermittent fasting, for you ladies who do intermittent fast, for you ladies who have tried it in the past, you'll notice that on the mornings that you drink lots of this, you don't struggle with your appetite near as much, okay? Near as much. All right. One thing that I'll do, I just want to, before we move on, yeah, before we move on, does that make sense first of all? If it does, comment hydrated down below. I think we've got one or two, one or two more maybe. So comment hydrated, hydrated. Yeah, cool, Debbie, awesome. Another thing that I didn't mention on sleep, yeah, like I told you I could talk about this for a whole hour, but... Um, Sleep, you know, caffeine has a half life of eight hours. Okay, caffeine has a half life of eight hours. So, eight hours after you consume caffeine, you still have half of the amount of caffeine in your circulation. Okay, so if you have a coffee at, um, you know, 4 p.m., that's got 150 milligrams of caffeine in it, 4 p.m., by midnight, you've still got half of that caffeine. 75 milligrams of caffeine, which is a coffee worth at midnight, the equivalent to having a small coffee at midnight, which is massively going to impact that quality of sleep. You might still get your seven hours, but the quality of sleep within that seven hours isn't going to be the same because there's a difference between duration of sleep and quality of sleep. And that is determined by how long you spend in the ranges. OK, there are three non-REM ranges and one Rep, one REM range, and they all have their benefits and purpose, right? Oh, we're going backwards. There we go. Okay. Next, we've got lack of protein. So this has got nothing to do with energy, but this has got everything to do with feeling fuller for longer, okay? Protein, so you've probably heard before, protein helps you feel fuller for longer, and that's a fact. That's true, but how? How does protein make you fuller for longer? So we were talking about that hunger hormone called ghrelin earlier, yeah? The, the, the hunger hormone that is responsible for increasing appetite. Now, protein, there's a direct correlation between protein, increase in protein and decrease in that hunger hormone called ghrelin. So when you consume protein, you experience a massive dip in that hunger hormone called ghrelin, which leads to a decrease in appetite and an increase in satiety. So if you're struggling with your appetite throughout the day, increasing your protein is a huge way of combating that, okay? A huge way of combating that. And you can do that anyway, you know, if you're eating fish, tuna, you know, haddock, whatever, any other meat, you know, red meat, chicken, turkey, um, you know, protein bars aren't the best, really. They're okay. I mean, most people will agree that they're very calorie dense. They're very carb dense. They've got lots of protein, but they don't taste all that great, okay? You know, a protein shake, on the other hand, there are so many different brands of protein shakes. And honestly, now, they're actually quite enjoyable. 
They're not bad. Okay, I don't dislike my protein shake. I have two a day. Um, I don't dislike it. It's cheap, way cheaper than buying chicken or turkey. Way easier because it takes me 30 seconds to make this up rather than cooking something and cleaning up, for instance. So it's cheaper. It's um, it's cleaner. Yeah, it's quicker, which means I'm more likely to do it. All right. So, you know, getting yourself protein powder or the pre-made ones, a little bit more expensive, but you can take that with you. If you're having a meal, which is very low in protein, if you pair it with this, it's no longer a low protein meal. It's now a high protein meal. OK, you aren't going to be hungry two hours later. Instead, you're going to be fine for the next four hours. That's important because if you're struggling with appetite, you're going to be struggling with cravings portion sizing, snacking, and over-consuming, which, again, at the end of the month, you wonder why you haven't lost weight because you've over-consumed, because you've lacked protein, all right? Okie doke. Does that make sense, ladies? If it does, comment protein down below. Whilst I wait for that, I'm going to have another few sips of water. I think I might, um, I think I might be, <laughs> I think I might be losing my voice a little bit, ladies. But um, we're okay. We're okay. Kathy, um, I'll drink Glucerna, I think you said. It has 15 grams of protein. Yeah, nice. 15 grams is a pretty good portion size. You know, I think most of you ladies in an ideal world should be consuming as a minimum 60 grams of protein a day. Yeah. one For context, one protein shake is 25 to 30. So half. That's pretty darn easy. The more protein you consume, the fuller you're going to be. There is no, um, any anyone that says it's bad for your kidneys is full of rubbish, okay? And that, that's, not been, that's not been found in any study whatsoever. And if you over consume protein, you pass it via urine. That's it. It just ends up being um, an expensive trip to the loo. That's all. That's all that happens if you over consume protein, okay? All righty. Next, we've got get up and move more. So this isn't going to have any bearing on feeling fuller for longer, but it is going to have an impact on having more energy. OK, if your step count for the day is really low, if you're sedentary for much of the day. Are you going to be feeling energetic? Of course not. OK, so getting up, walking around the block five minutes, doing a 10 minute walk, 15 minute, going to the gym, doing a home workout, stretching, anything that doesn't involve you sitting, sitting down is good. Doesn't matter what it is. Could be skipping rope. Doesn't matter. Swimming in the pool. Doesn't matter. But get up and move more. You're going to feel a huge difference in how you feel in regards to energy. Okay. Energy as well as mood. Okay, mood impacts our energy massively, massively. Okay, most of the time it's not actually you haven't got any energy, it's more so your mood is leading to not having any energy. Okay, who at the end of a six or seven hour car journey feels absolutely shattered, even though all they've done is sit in the passenger seat? Me, absolutely. How are you so tired if you've literally done nothing, expended zero energies? Because you're bored out of your mind. <laughs> yeah, you're bored out of your mind. All you've done is sit down. That's it. Is it really a surprise that you've got no energy? Of course not. That's why. Okay, so getting up and moving is really going to help you to feel better in regards to in regards to energy. Okay. All right. Now, you know, I didn't want to, I didn't want to give you a list of like 10 to 15 things here. Okay, because if you try to change everything, you change nothing, okay? If you try to change everything, you change nothing. And I would be doing a disservice to you if I gave you a list of 10 things. So there are some other things that we coach our clients. There are other things to look for. But again, if I give you a huge list, I'm not going to be helping you. I'm going to be doing the opposite. OK, but these are the things here that are going to be very impactful. If you focus on these things that we've spoken about, you are going to feel better in regards to energy. Fuller for longer. All right. Awesome, ladies. 
Okie doke. If you would like, you know, some extra support, if you'd like to sit down one day, grab a coffee and have a five to ten minute chat, you know, on Zoom, you know, we can absolutely, we can absolutely do that. Okay. It's just a chat. If that is something that you would like to take advantage of, you know, comment coaching down below and we can find a time, you know, some after the holidays. Of course, you know, either after the holidays in the new year. But um, as you can imagine, January is a busy, is a very busy time of year for us. So it's better to get something booked in, of course. If there is something that you want to take advantage of, if you do want some extra support, if you do want to sit down and have a chat one day, then we absolutely can. Again, comment coaching down below and we'll find a time that suits. All right, ladies. Um, I hope you found this helpful. If you have, found it helpful comment helpful down below all right lots of commenting today i love it i love it lots of engaging you ladies have been you know yeah good move move nice you ladies have acknowledged as we've gone through that it's made sense if any of you ladies you know have got any questions then i'm going to stick around for another another minute you know any questions in regards to the things that we've just spoken about please do let me know whether you in the future too you know, watching this over the weekend, over the Christmas period, whenever it may be, um, any questions, comment down below and I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as possible. All right, ladies, um, stick around for another, another 20 seconds. If we haven't got any questions, we'll wrap it up here. All right. It is Christmas Eve Eve. As we're, as we're live at the minute, it's the 23rd. So I hope you ladies are starting to wind down a little bit. Um, some of you might have finished work. Some of you might be finishing work today. But um, either way, I hope you all have a fantastic Christmas. Okay. I hope you all stay safe through this hazardous weather that you guys are experiencing over, over in the US. Um, and I'll feel better soon. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, and I'll uh, I'll speak to you. All. I'll speak to you all soon. All right. Take care, ladies. Bye bye.